entire evening tonight to uh, to this. Let's see. Uh, can we mute, Hannah? Can we mute all the uh, the phone phones for now? Yep, got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, sure. and talking with everybody about what we're seeing. Um, so I'm Greg Witt. Uh, I am a University of Denver, class of 77. Uh, I have a long tenure with housing through the, through the fraternity system. Um, besides, I've been, have been a director and officer of the foundation for 11 years, uh, uh, no longer in that, on that board, but in the immediate past presidency of the National Housing. I also, for about the last 14 or 15 years, been the uh, president of the Road Chapter at Illinois uh, Housing Corporation. I'm spending a lot of time uh, with those, with that chapter, and particularly as it relates to COVID, spending a lot of time uh, with the undergraduates and uh, getting property ready. They actually moved into the house uh, on Monday. They began the move-in move -in process. So uh, what we, we thought we'd do is kind of recap some of the things that people should have been doing. Uh, if you haven't done it already, you may be too late in so many of these specs, and then kind of talk, uh, talk about what, what, what to do going forward. So um, if you have questions, just pop in the chat and we'll, we'll, we'll try to answer the questions as we go along and then at the end, we'll, we'll open it up to everybody. But what, what, what you should have done, uh, cleaning and disinfecting. So again, I'm gonna talk a lot about my own experiences uh, with the chapter of Illinois. I've been, been driven down to Champaign a couple times over the summer. I've met with our property manager. I was down there uh, uh, Thursday of last week to do the final inspection uh, with, with our property manager in, in light of the kids starting to move in uh, earlier this week. So cleaning and disinfecting. Um, cleaning and, and disinfecting, there, there's two kinds of things. So we have a, at Illinois, we have a a house, it's a little unusual from a fraternity house concept. It's, it's built with 12 four bedroom suites um, and common areas. We have a catering kitchen, all that. So we had with the 48 different bedrooms, we could sleep up to 88 people. Um, and one of, the, one of the things we do as, as part of our year end ritual is to, is to clean the rooms and get them ready. Uh, and, and what I found in our inspection is, is really the issue of cleaning. So I'm going to separate cleaning and disinfecting for, 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 for now. I think if you haven't done this or your, your house hasn't opened yet, the, the one thing you really want to make sure today, particularly with the parents' perception of everything, is that that house be clean. What I found as I did my inspection of each of the bedrooms, each of the common areas uh, in the chapter, was that the, um, there was dust everywhere. Top of light fixtures, on top of refrigerators, window sills were dirty, uh, bathroom counters, you name it, there was dust, there was dirt, the vents, the air, the air, their air vents needed to be cleaned. So it was a good thing that I did do this, this second inspection before the kids came down. Uh, I understand from the chapter president who came down on Monday that all that stuff got cleaned. So the first thing is about cleaning is making sure whatever service you had, particularly since so many of our properties have been vacant for four or five months, is that you've done the basic cleaning thing. Then it gets to disinfecting. And disinfecting is, you know, is is a is a wide range, and you should be have bought the the proper um, products that you need. And, and disinfecting it doesn't mean that, from what I listened to a number of webinars, you don't spray some disinfectant on on a counter, and then 30, ten seconds later you wipe it up. You let it sit, you let it sit, and, you, and then you clean it up uh, for for it to be most most effective. So I think when you when you start looking at what you should have done. Uh, and you still have time before your property opens, making sure you get your clean service in there with, with specific instructions on what they should be doing and how they're going to, um, how they're going to do that right. The next thing you should have done is you should have been in touch with your food service provider. What's your food service policy going to be? How are you working with your vendor? Um, again, I was on a call with the University of Illinois today and, and for the first two weeks of, of, of the dorms being open, they're not going to let kids eat in the dining room. Uh, they're going to be ordering their food. They're going to be picking it up. They're going to be taking it up to the room. Um, 
at Illinois, we're, we're working with our vendor right now that everything's going to be prepackaged, whether the kids take it up to their bedrooms or they, they eat in the common dining room. We haven't made that decision yet, but it's something we, that you all need to make some determinations on. The one thing that, that concerns me a lot about all the food service that I've seen um, is that is, is the food can be prepared, but what about drinks? Are you going to go to, um, to cans for soda pop and, and cartons for milk and bottled water and what? Okay, I'm not quite sure what just happened. No, I think our presenter. Yeah, I think sometimes uh, we, lost, we, we lost our presenter. So uh, let's let's give him uh, a minute to come back here. Hopefully he'll log back on. If not, uh, I will pick up where he left off. So, <laughs> Matt, go put on your suit and tie. I don't think he was in a suit and tie, for the record. <laughs> Good point. Hi, Harold Davidson. Good to see you. Amanda, yes, please text him. Just let him know that he's dropped off in case he doesn't realize. Um, we'll, 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 uh, ho hopefully his internet just cut out, uh, and, and he'll be back here in a second, so. Are you back with us? All right, you're on mute. So, so, uh, Hannah, unmute him. Okay. Yeah, I was, okay. All right, there we go. Okay, I was talking about the COVID-19 policy. Did you guys see the policy on the screen? No? Okay, let me try to get that back up again. Um, at, at Illinois, we created a, we worked with the undergraduates and let them create a policy. And um, This is something that we can share with you. I think I've sent it to ZBT nationally, so they have it. If It may be on their website. If not, we can send it to everybody, but it gets into move-in issues, uh, guest policies, sanitation policies, sickness policies. Um, so if you haven't, if you're, if you haven't worked with your undergraduate leadership to, to create this, we recommend that you do. Next is signage. Um, clearly we're, we're living in a world with a lot of signage about COVID. When you walk into any retail store, restaurant, uh, golf facility, whatever, there's signs all over the place about social distancing, wearing face masks. One of the things that we did, I may have, I may have brought this up at the last, at the last um, uh, meeting was we create, this was in the James Favor presentation. So we, we took this, we've had this posted on the outdoor, uh, all the outside doors of our chapter house, which basically is a warning. We're not asking people to do liability uh, waivers or anything like that. Um, I know some people have talked about it. We're not, we're not going to do that. We're just going to we're just going to post this so people are entering at their own risk, uh, and then ask these people with questions. And they're branded with us, and they're they're posted right now on our doors, leading into our, in our property. In, in hey, Greg, hey, Greg, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you reshare your screen, please? Because it's we're not seeing the uh, uh, the so so when you were talking about the COVID-19 policy, we weren't okay. able to see. What you are, okay. and, and if you need to, Hannah. No, can... no, I, I don't. Okay, it's not a problem. I just don't know why I'm not sharing the screen. Let's see. Uh, here we go. I must have when I, I must have had a little wiring issue. Okay, so here, here's the uh, here's the COVID policy. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry about that. So it goes into all our issues about moving in the house. Kids have been very good about wearing masks, how guests are going to interact, how, how what clean, clean plans we have, and what's our policy if someone gets sick. 
this is a living document that we're going to continue to do. And the other thing, I, the other thing that I mentioned was our signage stuff, which I'll post on now. So these, these this was this came out of James Favor material. Um, so we just were posting this on all outdoors, outside doors of our of our building. We we had these uh, printed hard stock. We laminated them, and uh, and, and hopefully they printed enough so that if they got ripped off that we could replace them. But we want to keep these outside in, as part of our signage. I think it's also important we ha we were in the process of doing that yet, uh, but having things reminding people to social distance and and wear face masks and wash their hands and do all the other things that are important as part of this process. Okay. Uh, next is the, the move-in policy. So that was, that was part of our chapter policy, but in Illinois, um, our move-in policy is such we, we're, we're asking people before they come in that they, they verify, take the temperature, verify that they haven't been exposed to anybody for 14 days, that uh, they haven't been in a hot spot, uh, and, and before they come to the house, uh, when we when they get there, we're going to take their temperature again. We, we bought a couple of those uh, remote thermostats where people contactless thermostats so people can take their temperatures when they get there. Uh, we're limiting move in to we have three floors in our house, so no more than uh, two families can move in on any one floor for any three hour period. They're, they're, everything's been scheduled for the whole week. Um, no more than two visitors can join the members, so two family members can help with the move-in. Uh, that, that's we just want to we want to maintain the social distancing. So far, after three days, it's been working. We got about 20 kids in the house, uh, and everybody be in by Friday. Um, that's our move-in policy. Visitors, um, visitors is, is something that it's it, we're you know it's it's a challenge and. Um, the kids have made a determination that they will, they, they will be allowed one visitor per member in their private space only. Visitors are not allowed in the common areas. We're also going to, uh, I don't know what happened my screen here, but uh, the visitors will be, uh, we're going to be using a card system, sort of a contact tracing kind of thing. So uh, I'll share with that in a little bit, but we have, we're, we ordered some stuff on Amazon that allows everybody who walks in the house to swipe their, their student ID card. So we've, we have tracking who's coming in and out of the house. Uh, so if we know if somebody's been exposed, we can warn people as well. Huh? There's, some, there's some software on Amazon. It's really an expense. I think the whole thing is going to cost us about $150. And, uh, and I guess that's what you all should have done by now. So let's talk about the next step. I don't, I'm not controlling the screen anymore. Amanda. Heather, Amanda, you, there you go. Thank you. So now, now what? Uh, we got to open the doors. So in Illinois, we have many of you all will start opening the doors next week or the week after. So we'll talk about these areas and then we'll, go, then we'll be able to go to, con, uh, to questions and answers. You want to flip to the next page, please? Okay, entry to the chapter house. Well, obviously we have uh, two types of members. We have members that live in the house and we have members that are non-residents of the house. Um, mm -hmm. I don't see how you treat any of them different. Um, you got to let our members in the house, in many cases they're paying their parlor fees or out house dues to, to use the house. But I think it's going to be important that everybody, and particularly in the common areas of the house, are wearing face, face masks. Um, I think when people come in, whether the member, particularly if they're non-residents, um, temperature checks are a must, and you know we want to limit. I, I think in the era of with what's going to happen with recruitment, particularly if you have fall recruitment, I think that there's going to be some challenges to how that's going to work in terms of smaller numbers. But I think we can do that. So um, come up with a plan or how you're going to, how people are going to be allowed in the house. Next. Contact tracing. So that's uh, what I mentioned before. We're, we're um, let's see if I can put this up here. Um, so can you see, because my, can you see my screen yet? No, I'm not. No, I can share my screen. Oh, Go ahead, Greg. You can share your screen now. Okay. Um, well, here's just here's one. There's two pieces of this thing. So I'll uh, 
I'll shoot links to uh, to Amanda and Heather for them to share with other people. So this is just a card reader. Uh, this, there's another piece to it, uh, something like that. So there's two parts to it, I understand. I haven't seen it. I don't know how well it works, but that's, that's our plan in terms of uh, going back to, uh, to contact tracing and how we're going to do that. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing now. Okay, um, so that's, I think, just things you got to think about. It. There, I'm not sure if it's the best device in the world, but in our opinion, we just want to know who's been in our house. Uh, if somebody gets sick, it's just important to, to follow up with it. Just, just, to follow, just to ask a question, so you said you'll, you'll follow up with us on it, but you said it's a device, is that what you said? It, like it's yeah. a, something yeah, that will... It goes into the cloud, or as I understand it, you just, you know, it's, it goes into a computer a cloud that records everybody who's been in the house. So it's only good as, as, as people actually, you know, slide their card, right? But we're going to okay. record as people, as any visitors come in the house that they that they be they be tracked. And you were mentioning it's about one hundred and fifty dollars, but it, does yeah. that include does that include every card for every? No, they're, you know? using, they're using the university ID cards. Okay, interesting. So I'll uh, I'm learning more. Uh, the chapter present learned it from the API guys who put, already installed it. So we haven't, it's just got order. We're waiting to get it installed and I'll let, let people know more. Uh, there may be better ways, but that's that's how we're gonna do contact tracing. No, I think it's a, it's a fantastic idea. And as Greg said, since uh, he's not able to share right now, I'll make sure that everybody's on here uh, that, that we get it out to you guys. Um, Cause it sounds to me like a, like a great idea. So um, Thank I'd you. Like, like to hear more about it for sure. I'd like to hear more about it and then we'll get it out to everybody that's on this webinar, so. Yeah, these are just off Amazon's page. So I just got these today. So hopefully it works. Okay, I just sent Greg, yes. Greg, do you have a in-house coordinator coordinating all this? We have a, we have a property manager that we've been working with uh, that manages our property. But not live-in? No, we don't have a live-in. Our house isn't set up uh, for, it was not built to have a, a resident advisor set up. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's, let's move on. Oh, this is the big uh, thing, it's conforming university and government regulations. Um, every state's different. Uh, I think in Illinois, we're allowed to gather 20 or 25 right now. I don't think we're at 50 yet. And our governor is threatening to shut us down again. So I think you're gonna to have to pay attention. And some of you know the Syracuse chapter got suspended for violating some of this COVID related stuff recently. Uh, so the, the word is just to, you know, to play by the rules, do social distancing, wear masks. I think it's better I, where, where the weather is cooperative, do more things outside. Uh, it's what, what we're going to be trying to do. The University is uh, at Ellen, University of Illinois is doing massive testing. Uh, every student's going to be and faculty member is going to be required to be tested twice a week. Uh, they've created their own saliva test, which gives results within 24 hours. Uh, so they're they're watching all the things that can be done, and uh, we're we're just crossing our fingers for the most part that uh, our guys can form. Obviously, we're not we're not anywhere near them, but uh, you can only warn them so much. At some point, they, they got to take the responsibilities. I've already heard from one parent today and wasn't very excited about that kind of the way, what I told her, so. Um, okay, let's move on next. Greg, I, I, quick question for you. Did you require any testing prior to them moving in or no? We're asking when they get this campus that they go do the test the first day. Okay, got it, thank you. So let's talk about cleaning. This is this is a scary one. Um, we're still trying. I'm still trying to nail this with my property manager. He just not sure he gets what I'm talking about. We've gotten prices that are to do a daily clean. What what I want to do, and I think is advisable for most people is is a lot of this is perception with the parents and the students as much as anything else. 
but there's, there's a cost factor to it. What do you really need to do and how frequently you need to do it and are you doing it right? Um, so I believe that areas, common areas, and have to be touched daily. And I don't know what that means in every house, but uh, the dining room, uh, the chapter room, stairwells up and down, common bathrooms. Uh, I don't see how you don't clean those with some kind of disinfectant at least once a day. And I don't know that, you know, and hopefully in most houses it takes an hour to two hours and it's not a costly endeavor, but it's still, my guess is for most properties, it's going to be upwards of 500 to 1,000 dollars a week while the kids are in the, in, in the house. And I don't know if anybody's budgets have that kind of money. So you have to do the best you can. If you can't get the kids to do it, and that's, that's always a challenge in, in this day and age, then you're gonna to have to go outside. We've gotten prices from local people. We've gotten prices from companies like Service Master uh, to, to look into this stuff. But I, I, and we're trying to see if our, our catering company could at least clean the tables at the, end of, at, at the end of meal services. So those are all the solutions. But again, it's the perception that you're doing something more than, than anything else. And, um, it's just going to be very, very expensive uh, if you and if you do it if you do it on a daily basis. If you do it on a weekly basis, I'm not sure what that means. I also am, am sure that, as we all know, that it could get cleaned and 30 seconds later in a fraternity house it could be trashed. So you have to figure that out. Talk with your with your with your residents and and find out what 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 the best way to go about it is. But uh, and see what your budget can afford. Uh, I, like I said, Illinois, I'm still trying to, I'm still wrestling with that, uh, what that's going to mean. Um, we have kids there and we're not, we're not opening food service for two weeks. So, um, at least the kitchen part of it's easy. Next. You guys want to address the recruitment thing, didn't you, I believe, Matt? What was the question? I'm sorry. The recruitment that was added to the agenda. Did you have some stuff or someone from National going to talk about recruitment? Uh, I, I didn't add that. I'm not sure. Um, Anna, if. Recruitment was on the original list of, okay. of topics, so I thought you, you had some. Okay, I thought the, I thought I thought somebody wanted. Oh yeah. Okay, but you know, recruitment. You know, is uh, I don't I don't think Steve Ehrlich's on the phone call, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, so it says guidance from the fraternity and, and uh, you know, I, I know Libby couldn't make it tonight, but, you know, they, I know they're working around the clock right now to try to come up with uh, with better guidelines and ways that they can be doing virtual uh, recruitment as well as, you know, even the virtual initiations and, and everything uh, around this topic. So um, I, I guess I would just say be on the lookout and Every chapter, I know they're 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 trying to uh, uh, to help uh, David Rand, who's in charge of uh, who's in charge of recruitment, um, and Anthony Haddad is the assistant uh, in charge of recruitment. Um, I know they've been working really hard with the chapters um, on virtual recruitment and helping to find legacies and, and so on. So, I mean, I know that there's there, there there are still chapters that are doing very well with recruitment, even even uh, without. Uh, having uh, even met the guys, so um, you know, I know this is a, a, it, it's been a tough a tough topic for sure. But uh, um, there are guys, there are chapters that are still doing very well. So, um, Matt, would you like some suggestions that I can tell you that yeah. uh, we're we're doing? Please, Ron, jump in. Um, so, so the first one obviously is we're um, pre-screening all potential recruits um, with the rush chairs on Zoom. Um, you know, we're signing, we're, we're signing people over the summer, um, and, and we have a week left, um, and we expect to come back with about 20 kids, but in terms of kids arriving to school, since there's no formal rush, um, we're going to be having, um, uh, we have about 10 people on our rush committee and essentially as we get individuals, we're going to have, um, you know, one or two. Uh, individuals uh, meeting with one or two rush uh, uh, committee members um, on our patio for lunch, um, so a socially distanced lunch. Um, and obviously in Tucson, we it's going to be very hot, and, and we can we can do that. Um, and and we plan to um, essentially make 
each one of, of our uh, rush committee uh, members responsible for um, for dealing with those recruits. We're not going to have everybody meet everybody. It's just impossible to do that. Um, once once bids are given out, we're, we'll essentially do um, you know five guys uh, with we'll pair we'll pair people groups up of brothers and um, and new guys to be initiated in smaller um, sort of pods. Uh, pro probably five uh, initiates to to or so each time, and then we plan to do our um, new member program continual continuing in those pods. So so that we're not going to have um, uh, big group meetings of um, of new members. So so um, we're also doing the same thing, by the way, for um, Monday night dinners. Like like we're doing our meals and shifts. So um, we're going to have the presidents and the boards at, at, at the multiple shifts for the Monday night dinners making announcements for out of house guys and whatever. And we'll do that. We'll have a, a shift for, um, for new members as well. Um, and again, that'll be outside on the patio. Um, uh, we were able to get um, plastic chairs. We have uh, about 50 plastic chairs and, and we have a very large patio. So we'll socially distance out there and do those types of things. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the theme for a lot of people in terms of recruitment is, is doing it in small numbers, small number of brothers, small number of recruits, getting them together, doing things. Uh, Attorney is certainly working with all kinds of information that they're, they're passing down to the chapters. And honestly, whenever we taught recruitment in the past, that's always been what's worked best anyway. So are <laughs> doing small group gatherings anyway. So that's uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. So. Yeah, I just, uh, but in terms of visitor policies, you're going to have to understand that there's going to be changes when you get, get these people into the house and how they adapt and making sure they're following the rules once they're in the property too. Okay. Well, I think the important thing, like everything else we're going through COVID, it's, it's evolving and we need to adapt to whatever happens. Um, we're going to have a lot of headwinds as we get into the fall, as the weather changes, it gets cooler. They're, they're anticipating spikes of, of incidents. Um, we know that people are going to get sick in our houses. We need to be able to respond to what, how, what that looks like when that happens. Uh, we're going to have issues with um, kids get, you know, kids going home at, you know, whatever school you're at, at Thanksgiving, are, we, are they going to be permitted back without some kind of quarantine, particularly go out of state. So I think the important thing is that everyone just has to adapt to what's going on. We have to be fluid, we have to be uh, respectful, but we have to also manage the assets that we were, that were that there are charges, making sure we're doing best for the, for, for the greater good. Um, but uh, be flexible and don't be rigid on anything that we're doing is, is our advice. So I'm open, let's open it for discussions. I'm sure there's a lot of questions. Yeah, Greg, this is uh, Jacob Winter, uh, ADMU advisor. I had a quick question. Um, so I saw on your, uh, on your policy, you mentioned, uh, you know, people are going to be getting tested once every five days. And you said something about your school has developed a certain test. Is that? Yeah, uh, yeah Illinois is testing. Yeah, they're being tested twice a week. Oh, okay, gotcha. So I was going to say, I, yeah, I'm not sure the feasibility of that often of testing for some places. So I was curious if you had some work around, but that, that makes sense. All right. Ron, are you able to speak quickly to what you did in Tucson? And, and I, I know it doesn't work. It hasn't worked in, you know, I checked in uh, Lawrence, Kansas, but uh, you know, it might be something for him to look at. Uh, Ron, if you're still able to just give the 30 second overview uh, as to what you were able to contract. Sure. Um, I'm driving actually to Tucson right now, and we're in the middle of the desert, so I may lose you, but uh, but I'm happy to tell you. Uh, we've contracted, so the school originally told us that they were going to test early that, that we contracted with an urgent care facility um, in, in Tucson, and uh, we made a blanket sort of fee. They're going to charge. Um, 
the member's insurance, but over and above that, we're going to pay a per man uh, 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 fee for the semester. Okay, so Ron, we, we are losing you. Um, but Jacob, essentially, uh, Ron, sorry, we did lose you. Jacob, essentially, uh, what, what, what they did uh, is they found a, um, a, a local urgent care facility that they were able to contract with um, to, to do uh, testing um, uh, more often than if then you know then the school would allow or then any other individuals allow so you know etc so uh they're going to come i believe the urgent care facility is going to come i, I don't want to misspeak for ron but he, he no could, you're not like, they are they're, they're you're exactly correct they're coming to the house yeah so they're coming uh, every other every is. other every other week yeah so they're coming up, to the property every other times, week right up, up to six times for the semester we're paying a hat a flat 150 fifty dollar fee per man but they're going to charge the member's insurance company every time. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's something to look into. Thanks for the info. But, so just something to look into. What town did you say you're in? Sorry, where are you? Uh, San Luis Obispo, Cal Poly. Is yeah, so I mean, I would, I would check every urgent care or every uh, testing center in San Luis Obispo and just see if there anyone's willing to do something similar to that. Um, yeah, we, we, that we checked. We did check Lawrence, Kansas, and, and unfortunately I wasn't able to find any uh, or Hannah uh, Farwell was unable to check uh, a fine one in Lawrence, Kansas, but uh, Ron was in uh, Tucson, Arizona. So Jacob might be something for you to. So Greg, sorry, go cool. back to you. Just wanted to answer that. Jacob, it might also be. I worked with our Cal Poly, my personal chapters, Cal Poly chapter there. Um, their university, all of the California State University system, is requiring different types of testing as well. Um, and so the university likely has testing available on their campus for students in some capacity. Um, probably not every five days, but um, I'm, I'm like 90% certain they're requiring it for when they come back to campus and then halfway through the semester as well. Okay, cool. It's good to know. What, are, what other questions do people have for, for Greg or for the ZBT housing staff or? Todd, Todd Gagliano, are you still with us? Yes, sir. Uh, Harold Davidson, are you still with us? Anybody else? John, John McCormick, and anybody have any other questions for us? Matt, can you hear me? Yep. Can you um, hear me, Matt? Yeah, yeah, we hear you. I, I, I don't have, I don't really have a question, but I, I but I just the overall comment, which is. Biggest problem that I think we're going to have is social events uh, off camera, not in the not in the back, and um, and I think that that's already happening. Uh, I think Harold probably knows about USC on their July Fourth parties. Um, I don't know about a July Fourth um, party. I think that I think that that's um that's going to be the biggest issue. Well, my understanding is at USC there's about 22 kids that tested positive for COVID. Um, at USC, there was 40 on the road that tested positive for COVID, but not in our house. None, none in ZBT to, to date. I think I probably dropped off. Yeah, we're hearing about every other word, but, but Harold, yeah. Harold uh, responded to you that there's about 40 on the row. Uh, they they got they got uh, COVID, but none in ZBT. So yes, no, 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 not not in ZBT, but it was it made the newspapers and the, and the media. So that's how I knew about and, it. And you were saying these were parties that were not at the fraternity houses, but they were taking place elsewhere. That's that's what I had heard on uh, through on July fourth or so. There were some parties, and then um, and that's how it started. The outbreak started. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, that I'm not familiar with. I, I know that anybody with COVID on the row is taken to USC Hotel, which used to be the Radisson, and they're uh, quarantined there. That's the policy on, on the row at SC. Right. So, and, and actually, that brings up a really good point, um, uh, which is that um, 
I think, you know, all of us have been, you know, making quarantine rooms and houses, but, you know, I think that what I'm seeing and hearing is that if these, th if it comes, it comes in waves. Um, and it's probably going to be where you have to get kids out of the house at, you know, like a dozen or 15 kids and figure out where they're going to go. And um, at USC, if they have that hotel, that's great. But that's some of the bigger issues, I think, um, that I'm, you know, one of the things I'm doing when I'm going to Tucson is finding out if there's a hotel that I can contract with. Yeah, I mean, most chapters, I don't think they have the resources where they can put people up in, in a hotel. Uh, you know, some universities are having plans. If, you, if you're in the residence hall at Illinois, you're, you're covered. If you're not, you're not. Um, we're, we're, because of the way we are set up is we can, we can quarantine people in rooms and suites if we have to, but it's, it's just a question. I, I'm going to believe that if one person gets it, 50 people are going to get it. They're going to be exposed to it. So everybody's going to get so, it. So Greg, just in terms of the cost, um, I came up with a per day uh, cost of $55 for what we charge for room and board. And uh, basically I put in our letter to parents that uh, if, the, if the kids have to leave, we'll be happy to refund them the $55, but anything over that, they're gonna have to pay yeah. for. And it's an interesting approach. Your own, at, at your own yeah. risk um, kind of thing. So, so, and it's, by the way, the same thing with the COVID testing. I charged a COVID testing fee on our invoices uh, before, um, uh, because since we made it mandatory and we brokered the deal and it was a way to get an extra charge, especially you know when we're discounting uh, rates now for, for, for this. Yeah, so just on another topic, just this came up with um, on a call with the University of Illinois, had a call for a lot of the housing advisors today. And they, they kind of pulled everyone because Illinois is going to go remote at, at Thanksgiving. Um, and they want to know what different organizations were going to do. And most of the, the groups said that they were going to leave their house open. They're going to keep charging people uh, for that period between Thanksgiving and Christmas uh, break. So I don't know what, what everyone else is thinking about that. But, you know, from a financial aspect in Illinois, we can't afford to give back what would be the equivalent of of, I don't know, $75,000 of revenue for that period of time because we still have to pay all the other expenses. Um, so there's something to be prepared for in your conversations with your, with your residents that they may be looking for that if, if your school changes the format. The other thing that you may want to be thinking about, and this came up in the call as well, is that if people go home at Thanksgiving, um, do you need to quarantine them when they get back? Uh, because we don't know where they've been. So if they're gonna come back to school, they gotta be kind of quarantined in, in, at the, in the fraternity house for that period of time, particularly if classes are all remote on campus, they don't need to leave. And the, the third thing that I'll kind of bring up that kind of came up on some conversations today is if classes are going mostly remote, what that means to uh, providing Wi-Fi and internet service in the, in the chapter house, are you gonna to have to boost your bandwidth to accommodate the, the added demand? You know, we got to get kids not to be doing the gaming and streaming and, and focus on their educational stuff. But it's going to be a challenge that I think we're all going to see as we as we get into the semester. It's a good point uh, as far as uh, uh, the, uh, if they go and even if they start going every other week or, you know, some of those. Uh, uh, that's a good point, Greg, we got to think about. So. so that's all I have unless there are any other questions. Amanda Hannon Austin is Kansas every other week or uh, right now uh, as far as classes or are they every are they every week in person do you guys know um, it completely depends on the program so um, most classes are in a hybrid format where I think this is what you're asking um, yeah. so there's three options either fully in person a hybrid or um, completely online hybrid classes mean either zoom classes um, which technically is online, um, or once a month in-person classes. Um, but they're already shifting them a lot. So I initially was in a hybrid class, and within the past three days, it's moved it's on. on. Um, gotcha. Yeah, so gotcha. I anticipate it's going to shift continually until the day school starts, and then probably after as well. Gotcha. And then Todd, yeah, I, Todd, I, I think for one of the things you may want to do is kind of put on the website, you know, the impact of uh, – 
uh, in remote classes on, uh, on Wi-Fi and internet use in the chapter house. I don't know if you can do some research on that, what that means, what the, what, what costs, like what, what are these providers charge for the, the next level of bandwidth? That's, yeah, that's what I was thinking when I asked that. Yep. So, okay. Um, anybody else on the call? Okay. Um, the only the only other thing um, Ron, we're not hearing you. Unfortunately, we heard the only other thing, and then you is our, once everybody moves in. Which for, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, we're having the kids make individual plans of what happens if they get sick. We have a lot of kids from out of state. A lot of kids you know, from across the country and their parents aren't going to be able to, to come to them. So what happens if, and we are asking them to do that in conjunction with their parents and our mom's group is getting with those, you know, we have 43 residents and, and we're dealing with that on a sort of individual basis. Right. Right. Okay, good to know. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Okay. All right. Ready. Greg, thank you for organizing. Appreciate it. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. Hey, Hannah and Austin and Amanda, will you guys hang on one sec, please? And uh, Matt, would you uh, would you mail get, can you get Greg's um, presentation and just mail it out? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, uh, and if we could get the name of that card reader, that's a fantastic idea. Yeah, I love the card reader idea, definitely. So, Greg, if you could get that to yeah, us. No, I, I, sorry, you already have an email. Okay, great. Awesome. Thank right. you. Thank you, Greg. Well, thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. You're welcome, Harold. Bye, Harold. Thank you. 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 Thank